This conference will now be recorded. Yes. So today we are going to see this talk of October 2017. It is benign bulbal dermatosis. Okay. And actually there is one guideline for this bulbal dermatosis uh, or benign bulbal lesions. Uh, this talk is supplementary to that guideline. It's not that you, ca you can get everything from that guideline or you can get everything from this talk, okay? Because the you have to make your own notes from these two sources as a one thing because some points are the given in that guideline and some points are given in this regarding specifically the clinical features of lichen sclerosis, lichen uh, planus, and all those things regarding histology appearance and all those things. So today, I think i have tried to uh, actually i have not combined these two things i have be, i have taken this exclusive summary from this talk only but finally in exam you have to take your own this thing regarding all these lesions so for lichen sclerosis you have to combine or for lichen planus or psoriasis whatever it is you have to combine the both the clinical features the clinical features from this talk also plus this guidelines also because they usually asked in combined in emqs and most of the time this uh, vulval lesions are asked in the emqs to differentiate between scler like in sclerosis like in planus uh, psoriasis all these things so please be uh, you have to do this talk and that guidelines so coming to the talk so for this talk basically is about uh, regarding how to identify the common lesions of this vulval pathology so how you're going to identify by general examination and whatever the further investigations are required and what is the general management principles okay they have not gone into detail of the unresponsive disease or this thing but they have just <clears throat> uh, they have considered the general management principles okay so on vulval examination so any patient who is complaining of vulval itch this is basically involving vulval itch so this talk is for vulval itch so any patient which comes with vulval itch what we have to do is first we have to do vulval examination so in that vulval examination you have to be you should know the what is the normal anatomy of the vulva so this is the figure they have given so these are the uh, typical parts of the external genitalia that is mons pubis clitoris clitoral hood outer inner labia that is labia majora labia minora heart's line which differentiate between the cutaneous and uh, keratinized and non keratinized epithelium okay then uh, urethra vestibule hymen vaginal opening so this is the basic anatomy uh, they have given to identify and to see exactly where the lesion is located Heart line is the junction between vestibule and inner labia. It marks a change in the epithelium from non keratinized to keratinized spamous epithelium. Always with vulval examination, you have to do digital and speculum examination to rule out any erosion, mucosal thickening, adhesion, and scarring in case of uh, vagina and outer vulva. So, which can be seen in condition like erosive lichen planus and lichen sclerosis. Now, the basic differentiating point I want to tell you here is, see, lichen sclerosis never involves vagina. Remember very well. So, whenever there is any vaginal involvement is there, it is always lichen planus. So, whenever you have to distinguish between lichen planus and lichen sclerosis, first see whether there is involvement of vagina or not. If the involvement of vagina is there or any other mucous membrane like oral mucous membranes, then you have to see that it is a it is always lichen planus and not lichen sclerosis. While lichen sclerosis is limited to the external vulva only. Now, vulval pathology can be a manifestation of general skin condition also. So, always you have to, along with vulval examination, you have to do examination of other sites, like hidden sites like umbilicus and natal cleft, to see any impetrigo is there, to see any psoriasis there. Also, you have to see the, exa do the examination of other mucous membranes, like oral cavity, eyes, mouth. As I told you, you have to see for this erosive lichen planus and psoriasis basically to differentiate from other sites okay so now what are the basic things or basic lesions that can be occur in this so erythema it is a reddening of the skin erythema is reddening of the skin it can be purely demarcated or it can be well demarcated so erythema indicates underlying inflammatory post procedure 
it is present along with pain. So if the erythema plus pain is there, you have to suspect infection. But only erythema, then you have to see whether it is poorly demarcated or well demarcated. Here you can see poorly de demarcated erythema is there. It is in the contact dermatitis of vulva. Okay. So poorly demarcated vulva, it is also usually associated with contact dermatitis. Well, here you can see it is a well demarcated erythema. It is present in case of psoriasis. Now, whitening, whitening of the skin, it can occur in the presence of normal epidermis like vitiligo or epidermal changes like lichen sclerosis. So, whitening can occur in lichen sclerosis. Lichen implication. So, any lichen sclerosis, lichen planus, lichen simplex. So, all these are lichen implication. That means it is a leathery thickening of the skin with increased skin marking because of persistent rubbing. So, lichen implication is the leathery skin thickening. Now, whenever you see any vulval itch or any vulval lesion, so first you have to see or vulval and vaginal swab you have to consider for the case in case of any infection. Then second thing you have to think of vulval biopsy if it, if it is. So now what biopsy? So always for vulva remember well it is incisional biopsy from the age of the skin. So where it should take also some normal skin plus the lesion so it is always incisional biopsy and not excisional biopsy this is a routinely asked question in exam remember well so for vulval lesions it is always incisional biopsy now what are the indications for vulval biopsy so all areas of vulval melanosis that is pigmentation or new or changing pigmented lesions persistently eroded areas which are not responsive to treatment indurated or suspicious ulcerated lesions and when there is poor response to treatment following initial diagnosis. So all these are indications for vulval biopsy. Now patch testing should be required when you are suspecting any allergic contact dermatitis. So whenever you are suspecting any allergic contact dermatitis, you will be doing patch testing. So these are the investigations that you should do for this vul uh, vulval itch. This is the flowchart de that they have given how to manage vulval itch. Excisional biopsy, no excisional biopsy in vulva. Why you see excisional biopsy? Only one thing is there, one exception is there elderly patients. Okay, elderly patients, circumscribed lesion is there who may not be fit for further radical excision. Okay, who may not be a fit candidate for uh, further radical excision. So, in that case, you can do excisional biopsy and then if required for the radiotherapy. So whenever you are almost sure of this vulval cancer and it is a well demarcated localized small lesion, then you can do excisional biopsy in that case. But otherwise excisional biopsy should not be done for vulval lesions, any suspicious vulval lesions. It is always incisional biopsy. So vulval itch, whenever a patient comes with vulval itch, first you have to see, you have to do the external vulval examination and in this thing, you are going to see the three things. Whether there is any presence of vaginal discharge or any discharge from this lesions. Okay. Then, whether the normal architecture of vulva is preserved or there are any skin changes. And if there are any suspicious features like intraepithelial neoplasia or cancer. So, these three things first you have to see. Now, if any vaginal discharge or weeping of the skin is present, then you have to suspect infection. You have to take swab and treat. Okay. Then, <clears throat> if any suspicious lesion, suspicious lesion of cancer or intraepithelial neoplasia is there, you have to take biopsy and refer her for further management to the specialized vulval clinic or cancer center. Then, if the normal architecture is pres preserved, so, you have to see whether the vulva is looking normal, whether the anatomy is preserved or not. Now, if the anatomy is preserved, then first you have to see is there any candidiasis, okay? So, if there is any candidiasis, you have to treat. Now, the normal architecture is preserved. Then another diagnosis, what you have to think is either it is a eczema or psoriasis. Eczema means contact dermatitis, any dermatitis, like atopic uh, dermatitis, contact dermatitis, allergic dermatitis or psoriasis. These are the things that you have to think if the vulval anatomy is normal. Only lesions are there but anatomy is preserved. Now when the anatomy is not preserved, that means scarring is there, 
okay Where, whenever there is fissuring scarring and all the things and well, well proper anatomy is not preserved then you have to think of either lichen sclerosis and lichen planus okay finally whether it is a contact dermatitis whether it is eczema whether it is psoriasis whether it is lichen planus whether it is lichen sclerosis here one thing is there for lichen sclerosis and lichen planus there is high potent topical steroid is the treatment while for eczema and psoriasis it is moderate potent topical steroid and allergic dermatitis you should not use steroids but it is only avoid the allergen okay and if any if you once you have given the treatment you have to see for the response if the response is not there to the treatment then you have to refer this patient for vulval clinic so am i clear regarding this flow chart so then we can go to the individual lesion so lichen sclerosis <coughs> It is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory skin condition. Here you can see, see the anatomy of vulva is not there, is not preserved. You can see there is the uh, burying of this collateral hood has been there. Here labia majora, labia minora, you cannot demark it very well, okay? So early stage disease, signs and symptoms can be very subtle and masked. But otherwise, it is usually, it is a porcelain white papules or plaques masses can be there, erosions can be there, fissures, lichenification, fusion of labia majora minora, adhesions can be there and basically it is a figure of eight appearance, okay? So figure of eight appearance whenever it comes in the question, it is your keyword, okay? Remember well in exam, figure of eight, cigarette paper thinning, then presence of fissure, no vaginal involvement, okay? So all these points towards the lichen sclerosis. And treatment of lichen sclerosis is to super potent or high potency topical steroids and emollients. So the general management, as I told you, general well-well care and topical steroids, there is less than 5% of risk of cancer developing. So always patients should be encouraged to self-examine on a regular basis. So what are the changes which are suspicious of cancer? These are raised or irregular regions ulcerations and persistent erosions so these are if your uh, uh, patient is having this changes so uh, the any uh, malignant changes should be suspected and she should be referred for biopsy in some patients there you will be posterior forehead scarring can occur so scarring at region of posterior forehead can occur here you can see here the scarring will be there in that case like penetrative intercourse which will be very difficult so uh, Usually, the initial treatment is to massage the steroid into that scar on daily basis, okay, with vaginal dilators and lubricants. But if this majors fail, you have to revise the scar or refashioning of the scar should be done. Now, lichen planus, it is also similarly chronic, chronic inflammatory condition. There are two main form, two forms or two types of lichen planus that affects vulva. The one is classical lichen planus and one is erosive lichen planus. So these two are totally different things. So classical lichen planus, always again, these are all keywords for this, your exam, okay, for EMQ. Bohylaceous, well-demarcated plaques with overlying lacy white lines. It is usually affecting the labia majora and surrounding skin. So these are the classical lichen planus. And I, as I always, as I told you before also, vaginal involvement demarcates the lichen planus. When the vaginal involvement is not there, it is usually lichen sclerosis. Now, erosive lichen planus, again, the keywords are glazed erysema, symmetrical distribution at vaginal introitus, weak hamstries, okay, white slightly raised edges to the lesion, and loss of anatomy. So, all these things, these are erosive lichen planus. Classic lichen planus, it responds well to the treatment. With topical steroid by erosive lichen planus, it does not uh, respond to the treatment very well. There will be excessive pain and burning, scarring will be there. Okay, erosions can be there at the vagina. Okay, so this is very painful. Classical uh, lichen planus will not be painful, but erosive lichen planus will be painful. There will be involvement of vagina, sometimes other mucous membranes like oral cavity. So, in that case. 
you have to refer it to the vulval service. So here you can see there is involvement of vagina. There is discharge from the vagina. These are the lesions of the erasive lichen planus. Okay. Then next is the vulval, vulval dermatitis. So vulval dermatitis, it is again three types. One is atopic dermatitis or it is called as eczema, allergic dermatitis and irritant dermatitis. So we will see all the three one by one. So in case of atopic dermatitis, it is also called as eczema. So atopic dermat dermatitis, it can affect vulva in conjunction with other body parts. Okay. So this atopic dermatitis usually occur on other body parts also along with vulva. So you have to uh, see for that also. It is usually poorly defined, as I told you, poorly defined symmetrical, scary, erythematous areas. Okay. Skin is always dry. There is no loss of anat uh, anatomy. Okay, and these are symmetrical, erythematous, VP skin. So all these are, again, keywords for this atopic dermatitis. Satellite lesions will be present and they have poorly defined edges. Okay, so there are two satellite lesions. One is the atopic dermatitis, another is the candidiasis, and third is the melanoma. So there are the three things where the satellite lesions are there. One is vulval atopic dermatitis, Another one is a candidiasis and third one is a melanoma. So these are the three things where you will get the satellite lesions. Then most important thing is atop, at, atopic vulvitis or atop, sorry, atopic eczema. It is the most commonest cause of vulval itch in the children. Okay. So remember well in children, it is not candidiasis. It is not infection, but, but it is atopic vulvitis. It is the commonest cause of vulval itch in children. Then contact dermatitis, it can be either irritant dermatitis or allergic dermatitis. So irritant dermatitis, of these two, irritant dermatitis is very common. It can be triggered by soaps, perfumes, medicines, urine, thesis, or sweat, anything. So barrier function of the skin becomes impaired by these irritants. And again, it is worsened by this continual app continuous application of these products. So the lesions are? Poorly defined erythematous lesions, small fissures and erosions can occur and lichenification can occur in case of long-standing cases. Sometimes fissure may be secondarily infected like candida or other uh, uh, infections. So whenever you are giving treatment, you have to see for the secondary infections also. Then allergic dermatitis, it is less common, okay? So only one-fifth of the patient who are having vulval skin, they have positive patch test. So it is difficult to distinguish from irritant contact dermatitis, usually in acute phase. But only thing uh, here, involvement can extend beyond the area of contact. The only way to diagnose atopic, uh, sorry, irritant from uh, allergic dermatitis is patch test, okay? So, from a, a differentiate between allergic and irritant dermatitis is only ash test because lesions are mostly similar. And the main difference lies here in between this allergic and irritant is. So, for all other dermatitis, the treatment is steroids, while only for irrit uh, allergic dermatitis or irritant dermatitis, you have to avoid these allergens and irritants because here again, topical steroids, they can act as irritant or allergens, okay? So here you have to avoid this. Then another another form of this eczema is vulval seboric eczema. So it is usually manifest like psoriasis. So it is usually difficult to distinguish from psoriasis. It is a bilaterally glazed skin in the interlabial sulci. Bilateral glazed skin in the interlabial sulci. And how you are going to differentiate from psoriasis is so vulval seboric eczema, it is limited to the bulbar. While next thing is uh, for psoriasis, you will find other body part involvement while vulval seboric eczema is limited to the bulba. So it is the only thing that will differentiate it from psoriasis. Then, so psoriasis, it is a well demarcated scaly erythematous plague. But here, the differentiating point in vulva, that in vulva, you will not find any scales, okay? So there will be no scales in vulval creases, but surrounding skin will have scaly lesions. So here, as you can see here, 
see in the vulval area there are no scales but in the perianal region so where the lesions are in the perianal area there you can see scales but in vulval area there are no scales because this area is a moist area so it is basically well demarcated erythematous glazy patches is the basic uh, lesions of the psoriasis okay and these are salmon pink in color smooth and glossy so these are the keywords for this uh, psoriasis vulval psoriasis yes any doubt one minute most common cause of itching in people of low socioeconomic status see is is there any question like this Yes, Rekha, is there any question like this? Have you seen any question like this? Because I don't think I have seen the question like in most common cause of vulval itching in children, I have seen. But uh, in low socioeconomic status, yes, uh, because I have not seen uh, anywhere key, it is specifically mentioned that candidiasis is a cause for this thing. Okay. But if you come across such question, just please forward us in the group. We will see. We will try to find out. Okay. So clinical assessment here, there is again the in psoriasis. In all other things, you have to remember that there will be no scarring and no loss of anatomy. So in case of, uh, except in case of lichen sclerosis and lichen planus, in other lesions, there will be no scarring and no loss of anatomy. Also for psoriasis, it is important to see for other sites. So hidden sites for uh, signs of psoriasis like knees, elbows, umbilicus, scalp, ears, lower backs, and nails. So these are the usual areas of uh, psoriasis affected areas. Then lichen simplex, it is just the thickening of the skin. Okay, lichen simplex is just lichenification of the skin because of chronic scratching. There will be no loss of anatomy, but only thick leathery skin will be there. Usually it is present along with lichen sclerosis or eczema. Now intertrigo, <clears throat> it is another thing. It is usually observed in fat people, okay? So overweight patients where there will be a flexural rash, which will involve groin, metal cleft, submammary region, and abdominal apron fold. It is usually because of infection of this flexural areas because they will remain constantly moist. So like either candida infection, erythasma infection or cornibacterium infection or some tenia species. So this is usually infectious in etiology. So the treatment here is using both antibiotics plus antifungal agents together plus emollients. Okay, so this is the treatment for this intertrigo antifungals plus active antibacterials plus emollients. Which antibiotic for intertrigo? Again, they have not mentioned, but I think uh, it is just a skin, this thing. So you can just apply any antibiotic, just you have to give some uh, this thing only barrier. Okay, so that, but still I will uh, try to find out. Then for, again, it is vulvovaginal candidiasis. So I, there is two types. One is acute and one is chronic. So acute, usually it is resolves quickly with single dose of treatment. But recurrent candidiasis, what do you mean by recurrent candidiasis is six attacks per year. Or chronic infection, it can be more subtle and more recalcitrant to treatment. Again, you have to remember that patients with other vulval conditions like lichen sclerosis or eczema or dermatitis, they can also develop candidiasis because of repeated topical steroid application. Okay, so always whenever in vulval lesions or vulval condition, whenever you suspect any infection, there should be low threshold to take swap for infection. The treatment for recurrent candidiasis is initial treatment followed by maintenance regime for six months. So it is a 100 milligram fluconazole single dose as an initial treatment followed by 100 milligram fluconazole weekly for six months. Again, cessation of therapy may result in relapse in at least 50% of women for this vulvovaginal candidiasis. Now regarding, as I told you, almost everywhere the treatment is general vulval care plus topical steroids. So they have discussed the treatment at the end of talk. So general principles of vulval care is you have to first give good education regarding vulval hygiene. You have to provide proper support and counseling. Provide information leaflets regarding how to take care of this vulval care regime 
and went to uh went to go to the clinic or went to refer to the higher centers whenever like uh, you find any suspicious lesions so soap and routine cleaning agents they should be avoided soap substituted with bland cream or ointment based emollient okay so bland cream or ointment based emollient is the best thing for cleaning of vulva in case of this vulval itching now the mainstay of treatment for all vulval diseases is topical steroids so basically for lichen sclerosis and lichen planus super potent topical steroids is used while for my uh, other things like eczema and psoriasis it is the moderately potent steroids so potent steroid is clobet clobetasol propionate it is 0.05% it is a 3 months in tapering dose so this steroid should be used once in a day ointments are preferable to creams because they have fewer constituents and lower chance of causing any allergy or irritation dermatitis once inflammation and symptoms are controlled they should be reduced to the minimum frequency to maintain remission so usually it is a weekend therapy so that is applying topical steroids on two consecutive days per week it is the weekend therapy which is usually applied for eczema or psoriasis patient so this can be a maintenance treatment that is also used for lichen sclerosis patient also so topical steroids it should be used only on affected areas to prevent side effects in adjacent skin like side effects like thinning of skin thinning of epidermis and this thinning of ectasias are common with this topical steroid application on normal skin now whenever the patient is having failure to respond to this steroids the things what you have to consider is whether the proper compliance is there or not so the main reason can be poor adherence because patient will usually over look steroids as a something very uh, dangerous thing to apply or something very dangerous drug so they usually do not adhere to the treatment once they the lesions get resolved they will stop using those steroids so you have to see that whether the adherence to the treatment is there or not inaccurate placement of topical steroids so what happens in case of elderly women they may not use mirror and instead of the proper lesion they may apply to somewhere else then continued exposure to irritants like soap or other medicines and incorrect diagnosis in case of either pre malignant or malignant changes or in case of any allergic dermatitis so in that case uh, your uh, steroids are not going to work so if there is any concern like pre malignant or malignant changes then biopsy should be taken so this is regarding the vulval talk so these are the question please type your answers in the chat box the first question is what is the commonest cause of vulval itching in children yeah yes very good it is atopic vulvitis Next one, a 30-year-old woman has been diagnosed with recurrent vulvovaginal candidiasis. What treatment is recommended for this patient? Yes. So it is an initial treatment followed by weekly treatment for six months. so it is answer c initial treatment with fluconazole 100 mg followed by 6 months maintenance regime of 100 mg per week answer is c so again i will tell you this talk is not complete you have to combine it with your rcog guideline or batch guideline of vulval conditions okay then only you are going to get the complete knowledge of this vulval conditions so thank you for attending today's talk tomorrow we will meet with another one yes one thing is there today i have completed 2017 total talks okay so 2017 is completed now i think i will start with first 2020 and then we'll we'll come back to 2018 and 19 okay so first we will do 2020 talks bye for today